In this Wrestle Talk news, CM Punk blackballed from WWE, Braun Strowman's AEW meeting, potentially, a riot breaks out at an indie show, and more. Give us a subscribe and enable notifications to always on, or I'll tell Tony to turn this signing car right around, and nobody will get CM Punk or Daniel Bryan. It's on you now if they don't debut. Support Wrestle Talk. Last week saw several of the most exciting days in wrestling from the last decade. Not only did fans return for WWE shows to watch their hometown stars lose in, reports also started to emerge about the only industry-shaking free agent signing still available for our marky hearts. And now I can confirm, it's 100% happening. Emmy Sakura to AEW confirmed. That's right, everyone's favourite Freddie Mercury cosplaying Joshi has announced she's booked a one-way ticket to America, suggesting she's joined AEW's women's division full-time ahead of their second weekly show launching next month. I know, I know, there's two almost as big names being reported on right now. Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. Now, I've had a running gag on this channel for about four years, but regardless of who a signing story is about, I will end it on some variation of Phil Brooks' wrestling name to some wrestling promotion. Affirmative. There have been many false starts over the years. Punk seemingly set to sign with AEW ahead of All Out 2019, his culture-changing stint on WWE backstage, and that time Five Star Wrestling offered him $1 million for a match in 2017. So close. So, like I said on last Thursday's AEW Review podcast, that catchphrase will not pass these lips again until CM Punk is officially announced by All Elite Wrestling or turns up on Dynamite. With that in mind, let's have a look at today's stories. AEW co-executive vice presidents, the Young Bucks, have made their latest jokey update to their Twitter bios, with it currently reading, Are the rumours true? I don't know. We just hope they'll take our finish well. Two crying with laughter face emojis. They're of course referring to the rumours of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk signing with AEW and how they'll beat them. Back down, Bucks. Their first feuds have to be with Cody. It's the law. CM Punk would take <laughs> Conan, who's been managing Santana and Ortiz in AEW as of late, recently said on his Keeping It 100 podcast that he asked AEW president Tony Khan whether Brian really is joining the company as he'd like to use him in the Mexican promotion he books AAA. He goes, you know I can't tell you that. And then I looked at him and I go, bro, if that f shows up in Chicago, that place is gonna melt. And he just smiled. So I think he might have. But he has not told me. CM Punk to wait. Oh, God damn it! That one's not even about it. If you head over to social media, though, you might have noticed 1980s funk metal band Living Colour have started following All Elite Wrestling on Twitter, which is notable because they are the band that sings Punk's cult of personality entrance music he used in both WWE and for his brief UFC run, which he first debuted on the 25th of July episode of Monday Night Raw, returning from leaving the company at Money in the Bank 2011, exactly 10 years ago. Yesterday. See, see, I'm quick. Cut to the sponsor. I'll be right back with an actual news story that says Punk is 100% signed. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor. I'm still, I'm still going there. I sure do. Like my cereal. Magic Spoon, we're, we're, we're sponsored by Magic Spoon, which you can get $5 off on your order now by clicking the link below. I love cereal. Look at the size of my cereal bowl. It has the depth of two of your normal bowls, peasants. But about eight years ago, when I decided to start being healthy, I stopped eating the cereals of my childhood. I had too much sugar in, void of nutrients, and I was swallowing too many free toys. Ever since, I've been eating muesli, dry, 
grown up muesli. Well, screw you, nuts, or whatever's in muesli, because Magic Spoon has recreated the delicious cereals of your youth in healthy style, with zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein for the muscles, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving, and just 140 calories, which means I just have two servings. You can try Magic Spoon in four delicious flavors. Cocoa. Fruity, which I can't show because it will clash with the green screen. Peanut butter. And my favorite, because I've eaten them all now, Frosty. And they pair particularly well watching New Japan shows in the morning. So click the link in the video description below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And make sure to use our promo code WrestleTalk at the checkout to get $5 off. Or just go to magicspoon.com forward slash WrestleTalk. And if you don't like it, Magic Spoon has a 100% happiness guarantee, meaning they'll refund your money if it's not for you. So please click the link below magicspoon.com forward slash WrestleTalk or use the code WrestleTalk to get $5 off your order today. Just clicking that link helps support us here at WrestleTalk, so please at least check them out. Support WrestleTalk. Support Magic Spoon. Since Fightful Select broke the news last Wednesday that CM Punk was in talks to return to the ring somewhere, most likely AEW, Ringside News added that as of right now, it is a done deal, and both sides are just waiting until they are in person to sign the contract. Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net, who was the person who broke the story about Daniel Bryan signing with AEW, has corroborated that, saying he was told that Punk is 100% for Chicago. They want CM Punk in Chicago, they want him to be there. It's not a matter if, but when. You know they have Wednesday the 1st Dynamite, they have Friday the 3rd's Rampage, and they have Sunday the 5th's All Out. Would you rather Punk debuted for AEW on the Dynamite before the pay-per-view, as the big go-home angle to drive viewership for Rampage and buys for All Out? Or just have him as a surprise appearance at the pay-per-view itself? Whatever you think, tell me CM Punk to A- Oh god damn it! In the comments down below, because I'll be replying to as many people as I can for the first 30 minutes after this video goes live from out of nowhere. With Punk and Brian's AEW debuts reportedly been a done deal by this point, the main question now is becoming how? There are two conflicting versions of this. Dave Meltzer has written on the Wrestling Observer Forum that Brian's AEW talks go back a few months, but he's been holding off on making a decision until recently to see what WWE would come up with. It was reported in June that WWE President Nick Khan no relation, was in talks to establish a working relationship with New Japan, as a way to keep Brian happy if he agreed a new deal with them. Whichever promotion out of WWE and AEW got the New Japan Talent Exchange was apparently 90% of where Brian would end up. The WWE and New Japan talks obviously didn't work out, as last Wednesday's Dynamite saw a New Japan title change hands in the main event between two AEW contracted wrestlers. Bodyslam.net, however, claims Meltzer couldn't have known about Brian and AEW in May, as talks between them didn't actually start until about two or three weeks ago, although they were having talks internally. This was reportedly when they decided to debut Brian on the 22nd of September episode of Dynamite in New York, which was still the plan before the weekend. But as great as long-term booking is, the card is always subject to change, especially when CM Punk might sign too. Bodyslam.net claims the Punk stuff happened after Brian, which has kind of thrown a wrench into how they want to present everything. Now they've got to reformat everything to capitalize off this buzz, which might mean they bring Brian's debut forward too. With CM Punk seemingly set for an AEW debut, it was speculated WWE might make a last minute play for him. Not so, according to Ringside News, who claimed they were explicitly told by their sources in the company, WWE has no interest interest in doing business with Punk. This ties in with reports over the last couple of years that Vince McMahon has blackballed Punk from the company, who reportedly immediately shoots down Punk's name in creative meeting pitches, saying he is not to be trusted and has serious issues, labeling him as the one man I just can't do business with, even when Punk's agent tried to have WWE return talks in 2019. But why stop at Brian and Punk? More talent signing tease segues. Last Friday saw a bare knuckle fighting championship show take place in Florida. Where else? With more pro wrestlers in the crowd than a pre pandemic NXT takeover. The most notable of these was Braun Strowman, who was shockingly released by WWE last month, with the official bare knuckle Twitter account posting a picture of Strowman joking he's their new signee, while Braun was wearing a fanny pack. 
He can take the guy out of pro wrestling. Strowman revealed on his own Instagram that Dana Brooke's fiance, the boxer, Ulysses Diaz, got him tickets for the show. Potentially rather awkwardly, current WWE stars Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux were also at the event. Cross lost in two minutes to a roll-up shortly after this photo was taken. Jinder Mahal was also said to be at the show, but there was also a significant AEW presence at the event. With F4W Online reporting, Tony Khan, Paul White, Britt Baker, Christian Cage and Cash Wheeler were all there. It was reported last week that WWE might try to re-sign Strowman as they're concerned he could also sign with AEW. And potentially their paths crossed here. Speaking of cross, Andrew Zarian is reporting he was told that WWE has a clear direction for the current NXT champion Karrion Cross following his much criticised loss to Jeff Hardy last week. That two minute roll up was just the start of whatever storyline they have in mind and it is leading to something. Hopefully that something isn't being part of all the jobbers running after the 24-7 title. But if those plans involve Cross getting his win back over Hardy, that won't be happening anytime soon, as it's been announced Jeff tested positive for COVID on Sunday morning. This wasn't disclosed by WWE as they appear to have a policy of keeping such diagnoses private, but by the venue Record Bar, which was hosting an autograph signing with Hardy before today's episode of Raw, adding Jeff will have to quarantine for the next two weeks and will not be participating in any live events for the next two weeks either. As All Elite Wrestling has shown, there is life outside WWE now. But that doesn't always work out, as Matt Cardona, the former Zack Ryder in WWE, who was released by them last April, didn't have his run last summer extended there. Impressively, Cardona has now reinvented himself on the independent scene instead, specifically in a fascinating character turn for GCW, feuding with their champion Nick Gage. Cardona has effectively turned himself into the trolliest of heels even playing Jericho's Judas entrance music during his match last night, despite Jericho not being there. And after a bloody battle with Gage, because is there any other, with both men being cut to shreds by numerous exploding light tube shots, Cardona won the GCW World Championship, which caused a near riot from the crowd. As this video from at Effie Lives on Twitter shows, with a blooded Cardona being pelted with bottles and cups as he celebrated. A scene that Dave Meltzer gave negative five stars, tweeting, I'm sure people will make their lame excuses for it or say how great the heat was, but this crowd reaction was such bullshit and such an embarrassment to the industry. A tweet which GCW immediately released as a t-shirt. And in another effective heel move, Mark Sterling is now teasing Cardona or renamed the GCW World Championship, the GCW Universal Championship. El Fakidor, Laurie Blake's Alistair Black, Malachi Black explained video essay is now live for everyone to watch on Parts for Known. And it's already been widely praised, including by the man himself. So uh, watch that video. It's really, really cool. Give him, give him a like, give him a subscribe, um, give him a follow, you know, do, do what you can. Find him on uh, Twitter on at El Fakidor. That's with an F, El Fakidor. Uh, give him a follow and, uh, you know, like the video, share the video. Uh, really, really cool video. I like, I love it when people starting to figure it out. And that's also why I did that stream back then, because now people are starting to think and trying to pull everything apart. And that's why I wanted to do it. So um, I'm really, really stoked that he did that because it makes me, uh, it makes my, me uh, appreciate the work that I put into.